Chefs, what is the beef? Cam here, welcome to another live video. And in today's live video, blowing off steam at the end of a week is destroying the next week for you. That's today's topic that we're going to be diving into. So, this is a big issue and this is a big problem that, you know, it's a trap I used to fall into and it's a trap that I'd say every single one of us at some point along the lines when you've worked in fucking hospitality has fallen into themselves. And that is the trap of being caught every single week. At the end of a week, you finish a week of services. It's busy. You feel like you've achieved something. You've done the hours. You made it through. You survived because that's the feeling that you have. And at the end of that, because you're in a place of pressure, of stress, of fucking pushing yourself through the adversity and, and making it out the other end, you want a release. You know, you want a release. And in the majority of cases, this is what happens. You end up going for a couple of drinks. It's like, right, we'll have a beer after work. And then that beer turns into fucking six. And then someone's whispering about a fucking bag. And then someone gets a bag out. And then all of a sudden, before you know it, you've had about 10 or 12 drinks. You're spending money on a bag of cocaine. And then you're fucking five o'clock in the morning. And you're waking up the next day. And you're wondering, what the fuck just happened? You know, that's a really, really, really common trap that a lot of us have fallen into. You know, a lot of us have fallen into. And it's not that having a release when you've done the work is a bad thing necessarily, but it's when it becomes a cycle, you know, a consistent cycle. And if you've been in for years, you know exactly what that cycle is like, where every single week at the end of a work week, it's the same thing that happens. It's the same thing that happens. Horvath, what's going on? So this whole thing about blowing off steam, ultimately, where does that leave you? Well, the last service of a week when you're hung over and you're scagged and your headspace is fucked and you've just spent 150 to 200 quid, you know, on drinking drugs. Well, ultimately you wake up the next day and all the fun has been sucked out. You feel alone. You feel detached. You know what I mean? You're feeling shit. You don't do anything with that time off then on the day off that you have. And you go back into work, you know, not only feeling fucking depressed, but you go back into work feeling like you have no work-life balance because it, the feeling that you have is that, you know, I purely focus on work. My time off is spent recovering or getting a release from work. And then ultimately I go in back in feeling like I've had no time off at all. You know, I've had two days off and I feels like I've had no days off because I haven't done anything with that time. And the big thing there is that the release at the end of the week is fucking you up to a point where you're waking up on your day off and you don't want to do anything with that day off. You're tired enough already because of the hours that you've done. Now you add drinking drugs into that mix and it's a fucking recipe for disaster. You know, it really is. It's a recipe for disaster. And I know when it used to happen to me, it's a feeling of detachment. You know, there's a real moment I had where I woke up and I was in such a bad headspace, had fuck all sleep, mental night the night before, just had a really long week in work. And it's like, I remember walking to the shop the next morning to get like a Powerade or something because I was dehydrated and get some painkillers. And I remember looking at like people jogging past me at like 10 o'clock in the morning or something on a Monday. And just that feeling of just being alone, that feeling of detachment, that feeling of like, fuck, you know, why is my life like this? Why is their life so, so normal and so perfect? And yet I'm here, you know, scagged and hung over and I'm just fucking going to sit on my couch and watch Netflix you know, and then wait to go back into work, straight back into five or six days of really long, stressful days, you know, and just get into that again. That happens over and over again. It's a cycle that's very vicious mentally. It's very vicious mentally. And it stems from what you're doing physically. Um, and ultimately that can lead you to be very depressed about what's happening in your life. The thing that's very difficult about these situations is that, you know, uh, this isn't, this industry isn't full of prim and proper people, you know, the majority of us are fucking maniacs and that's the truth, you know, I know for me, I'm a, I'm a pretty fucking, you know, I have my shit under control now, but I was pretty wild way back when, um, you know, when I can fucking party if I need to or if I want to. And it's very difficult to pull out of that vicious cycle when you're surrounded by people who are the same way, you know, and you finish a week and things just escalate. And you got to understand that you are the sum of the five people you spend the most time with. Like if you're surrounded by fucking vegans, you're going to start being a vegan. If you're surrounded by really aggressive bikers, you're going to ride around on a fucking motorbike with a leather jacket on because you are those people that you spend time with. Show me your friends, I'll show you your future. 
So when you're working with these people all the time who draw you into negativity and things that you don't want to be doing, that's very hard to pull out of because you spend so much time there. It's very, very difficult to pull out of. So the key thing here and the problem that you're falling into is that the vicious cycle that you're falling into is ultimately leading you to be unhappy because it's not the way you want to be living your life. In the moment, it feels great and it's a bit of fun. It's the aftermath that's the problem. And when that continues to happen over and over and over again, it leaks into all aspects of your life where you're just not being productive or you're not getting shit done that you'd like to get done. Key thing here is that you must find a positive release and you must create balance. Must find positive release, must create balance. So positive release what does that mean? Well, a positive release means for a lot of the chefs that, you know, I coach are my own fucking personal thing. You know, I've had to swap uh, blowing off steam with a bag or a load of drink on a nightly basis. And I've had to change that for training, exercise, meditation, jujitsu, you know, things that focus my mind, but also make me feel good and, you know, make me feel good physically. So that fills with energy, self-esteem, all of those good feelings that you get. You must find positive release. For a lot of chefs, I always say structure is the key. Routine is the key to your success there. You know, so first and foremost, applying mise en place to free time. Like think about a prep list when you walk into the kitchen. Okay, how can you apply that to your own life? Well, have a list of things to do. Have the times that need to be done. And even if you can't get them all done, at the end of the fucking day, at least you've got a plan and you're getting some stuff done. There's satisfaction that comes from that. You organize yourself. So now the day actually has some structure to it. You've got to prioritize exercise, moving every day in small doses. You've got to prioritize having meals cooked ahead of time. So a batch cook, like a big pot of chili, two or three meals a day. When you have this structure, then you're able to find positive release. So instead of going to the bag of Coke, no, it's like, no, I can go for my fucking 5K run here. Then outside of that, it's about balance. So, sorry, not about balance. It's about environment. So I say when you, some of the five people you spend the most time with, the reason that chef fit is effective or, you know, it doesn't have to be chef fit, but the tribe mentality is that everyone in that tribe is someone who's been through the same thing as you. And now when you're going through it together and you're all pushing each other and you're fucking motivated to achieve a positive goal, it bolsters you and you're surrounded by people who are positive and they're pushing to be healthy. Great. You're going to push yourself to be healthy in that environment. Whereas if you can start taking that environment and replacing the negative one that you're in, you won't fall into the same vicious cycles. So it's two things, structure to give yourself positive release and then having a positive environment so you're not pulled into those same vicious cycles and you learn to be able to say no. That ultimately builds that balance in you where you're not drawn into a fucking vicious cycle. Every single week, at the end of a week, you do the same thing. It's the it's drinks, it's drugs, it's waking up the next day with your head up your hole, going back into work, feeling like you've no time off and being depressed about the vicious cycle that you're in. You're able to pull out of that cycle. That's really, really, really important. So, chefs, if you are in that cycle right now and you're in a space where it's like, shit, man, I don't have any work-life balance, I don't feel good physically, and I always find myself going to vices to wind down or release, that's fine. What I want you to do, if you have not considered joining us, have a look at the link, click it, um, and if you're interested in making a change, join us for a 30-day trial, you know, and let's see if we can really turn this thing around with you, because I guarantee you we have, because we've done it with many chefs before. With that in mind, if you enjoyed the video, give us a thumbs up. Much love to all of you. Thanks a million. Stay safe.